Have you ever wondered what would happen if all banks collapsed tomorrow? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But before we dive into the deep end, let's take a step back and consider the role that banks play in our society. Banks, as we know them today, are the lifeblood of our financial system. They are the arteries that pump money from one part of the economy to another, keeping everything alive and flowing. They enable us to save, invest, and spend, fueling economic growth and prosperity. They're the middlemen between those with excess money looking for an investment and those in need of funds for a project, a business, or a home. But banks aren't just about money, they're also about trust. We trust banks with our life savings, our dreams of a better future, and our plans for retirement. We trust them to be there when we need them, to secure our money and to give us access to it whenever we need it. This trust is a crucial component of any financial system. However, beneath this glossy facade of trust and security, banks aren't as invincible as they seem. They're susceptible to a variety of risks, from economic downturns and bad loans to cyber attacks and even their own mismanagement. These vulnerabilities can, and often do, lead to banking crises that can have devastating effects on the economy. But what if we told you that banks, as we know them, are bound to collapse? What if we told you that the very system we rely on to manage our money, to fuel our economy, and to secure our future is on a path of inevitable decline? It might sound like a plot of a dystopian novel, but it's a scenario that's becoming more plausible with each passing day. So if banks are so crucial, why are they bound to collapse? Let's delve deeper into this. Banks, like any other business, are susceptible to failure. This statement may seem surprising, but let's delve deeper into the reasons why this is so. Firstly, we must understand that banks operate in an environment of economic instability. The global economy is a complex and dynamic system, constantly influenced by a multitude of factors. From trade wars to pandemics, economic downturns to technology disruptions, banks are always at the mercy of these fluctuating conditions. And when the economy takes a nosedive, banks are often the first to feel the impact. They may suffer from reduced deposits, increased loan defaults, and even bankruptcy. Secondly, banks are not immune to poor decision-making. They take risks, make investments, and sometimes these decisions can go awry. Remember the subprime mortgage crisis of 2008? Banks around the world had invested heavily in these risky mortgages. When the bubble burst, many banks found themselves on the brink of collapse. Thirdly, corruption can also lead to a bank's downfall. Unscrupulous individuals and entities can manipulate a bank's operations for their own gain, often at the expense of the bank and its customers. A famous example is the case of the Indian Bank, Punjab National Bank, which was defrauded of nearly $2 billion in 2018. Lastly, let's not forget about technological disruption. With the rise of cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance, Traditional banking models are being challenged. Banks that fail to adapt to these new paradigms might find themselves obsolete and displaced. So, as you can see, banks are bound to collapse due to a combination of economic instability, poor decision-making, corruption, and technological disruption. But it's important to note that this does not mean all banks will fail. Many banks have robust risk management systems in place to weather these storms, now that we understand why banks are bound to collapse, what would happen if they did? But that's a topic for our next scene. Stay tuned. Imagine waking up tomorrow and finding out that all banks have collapsed. What would that look like? In the immediate aftermath of a bank collapse, the first thing you would notice is that your savings, your hard-earned money, would be inaccessible. This is because banks are more than just physical buildings. They act as secure vaults where we store our money. When they collapse, those vaults are essentially locked, trapping your money inside. This loss of savings would then ripple outwards, causing waves of economic instability. Businesses unable to access their funds would struggle to pay their staff or order new stock. This could lead to mass layoffs and business closures, further exacerbating the economic crisis. Meanwhile, on a personal level, people would find themselves unable to pay for their basic needs. Imagine not being able to buy groceries, pay your rent, or fill up your car with gas. The financial stress would be immense and could potentially lead to societal unrest. People may protest or in the worst case scenario, resort to looting and violence out of desperation. In the long term, a bank collapse could result in a massive shift in societal structures. Trust in financial institutions would be shattered and people would need to find new ways to store and manage their money. 
This could lead to a rise in alternative financial systems, such as cryptocurrency or local bartering systems. Of course, governments and international organizations would not stand by idly. They would step in with emergency measures, such as establishing temporary banks or providing financial aid. However, these measures would only be stopgap solutions, and the process of rebuilding trust and stability would likely take years, if not decades. In summary, the aftermath of a bank collapse would be chaotic and destructive. It would upend our economic systems and could potentially lead to societal unrest. The loss of savings would be a personal tragedy for many, and the ripple effects would be felt far and wide. Clearly the collapse of banks would have severe consequences, but is there a solution? In the wake of a bank collapse, what could possibly replace these financial institutions? Imagine a world without banks. It may seem far-fetched, but it's a reality that could be closer than we think. Now you may be asking, what could possibly replace these financial institutions? Let's delve into a few possibilities. The most talked about alternative is cryptocurrency. This is a digital or virtual form of currency that uses cryptography for security. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the most well-known examples, but there are thousands of different cryptocurrencies out there. They operate on a technology called blockchain, which is a decentralized system spread across many computers that manages and records transactions. Cryptocurrencies are immune to government interference and manipulation, making them a strong contender for the future of finance. Next up, we have community lending programs. These are essentially groups of people who pool their money together and lend it out to members of their community. This form of finance is more personal and intimate. It's about people helping people. It's a system that's been in place for centuries in many cultures, and it's making a comeback in the digital age. Then there's decentralized finance, or DeFi for short. This is a system where financial products become available on a public decentralized blockchain network. This means that you can make transactions or even take out a loan without needing to trust anyone else. It's all done through smart contracts on the blockchain. Of course, these are just a few of the potential replacements for banks. The truth is, the future could bring a mixture of these solutions, along with others we haven't even thought of yet. The world of finance is ever-evolving, and we need to be ready to adapt. While the future of banking may seem uncertain, one thing is clear, change is inevitable. Today, we've explored a fascinating and somewhat unsettling concept, the inevitable collapse of banks. We've journeyed through the reasons why banks are bound to fail, delved into the aftermath of such a catastrophic event, and pondered on the alternatives that may rise from the ashes. Let's take a moment to review the journey we've taken. We began by discussing the inevitability of the bank collapse. It might seem like a shocking revelation, but the signs are there if we take the time to look. The increasing instances of financial crises, the unsustainable practices, and the growing mistrust of the public in these institutions all point towards an impending downfall. Next, we explored why banks are bound to collapse. The reasons are numerous and complex, ranging from the inherent flaws in the banking system to the emergence of disruptive technologies and the inevitable economic cycles that they're ill-prepared to handle. The traditional banking model as we know it is struggling to adapt to the rapidly changing world. Then, we delved into the aftermath of a bank collapse. It's not a pretty picture, savings burnt, economies disrupted and lives turned upside down, but it's a necessary pain, a wake-up call for us to rethink our financial systems and our relationship with money. Finally, we ventured into the future of banking. What will replace banks? We discussed potential alternatives from decentralized finance and cryptocurrencies to community banking and peer-to-peer -peer lending. These alternatives are not without their challenges, but they offer a glimpse into a future where finance is more transparent, equitable, and resilient. The world of finance is constantly evolving, and while the collapse of banks may seem like a daunting prospect, it's important to remember that with every ending comes a new beginning. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay ready for whatever comes next.